morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have proclaimed the true font of light and wisdom, and the primal origin raised high beyond all things. Pour forth a ray of your brightness into the darkened places of our minds, and disperse from our souls the twofold darknesses into which we were born, sin and ignorance. You make eloquent the tongue of infants, refine our speech, and pour forth upon our lips the goodness of your blessing. Grant to us keenness of mind, capacity to remember, skill in learning, subtlety to interpret, and eloquence in speech. May you guide the beginning of our work, direct its progress, and bring it to completion. You who are true God and true man, who live and reign, world without end. Amen. Amen. So, just to bring to your mind, just recapture what we have, you know, about 15 days ago. So, not exactly, but you know, is that structure. So, first, we have the follow you don't write it, you know, because you already wrote it. Just to bring to your attention. Prolog means the writing to help and some things like that, okay? Chapter 1, 1 to 4. And the chapter is exactly the first two chapters. Infant's narrative, no? Infant's narrative, where John the Baptist and... See, even in the infant's narrative, it is beautifully arranged. That is, there is the announcement of uh, John the Baptist, of the foreigner, then followed by uh, the announcement of Jesus' birth. Then there is the birth of John the Baptist. Then there is the, the um, birth of Jesus. So that is announcement. And at the end, there are some in incidents, you know, some of the the just uh, offering to the temple and things like that, okay? So it's, at least, if you don't remember, you know, the the minute details, you know, that is, we, we are not, sometimes we are not able to remember all the details. At least, this much. If you can remember just this one, that would be very good, you know. Okay, Luke's chapter, first two chapters, just having mostly four things. Mm. What are they? Two announcements and two, you know, accounts of birth. So John the Baptist, then Jesus. So the two chapters are arranged beautifully that way. And we, you know, if that way we, you know, approach the Bible, it's easier, you know, to get into our mind. It's text there, no? Two chapters, one, two, one, two. Finish. And there is a structure following. Otherwise, you know, okay, what is that? You know, and to remember all those things, they're easy. So this way, it's very easy to remember. So, okay, this is... Uh, then, the more, the, for example, the... Um, This, uh, the chapters, the mostly the Luke's chapter is, you know, based on ministries. Okay, ministry. Where is Jesus' birth? You know, where did Jesus live? In Nazareth and in the, the areas of Galilee, no? So his ministry in Galilee. Okay? Okay, and then uh, another one is uh, then uh, uh, ministry. Then comes where did he finish his ministry? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So ministry in Jerusalem. Then, in between, look, is simple. There is a preparation for ministry in Galilee, and there is a preparation for ministry in Jerusalem. You got it? So the the gospel 
the 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 center of the gospel is this the core ministry of Jesus so the ministry in Galilee so there is a preparation for that <coughs> and ministry in uh, Jerusalem there is a preparation for that so that constitute the center of Luke's gospel I have heard, I mean, when they refer to Jesus as the Nazarene, is especially when they talk to him like that when he's before the uh, Sanhedrin, do they refer as a Nazarene as something they just don't think highly of? Or why do they just refer to Jesus the Nazarene? Um, I don't know exactly, but you know, to me it's called because, you know, he was, uh, what's called, he was, his house was, he's from Nazareth. And uh, uh, that's why, see, uh, there was an Old Testament, you know, prediction, no? He would be called Nazarene, no? Okay. Or there is, there is something we are go going to say, something about uh, the, the Old Testament, uh, you know, the, the all people, most, almost, almost all the... Uh, God's chosen people were at least asked by God, by law, the prophets, the Samson, uh, the big guys like, you know, Samson and all those people were asked to follow the rules of what's called, you know, the Nazarite. That means there is a set of rules. For example, he should not cut his hair. He should not take wine or things like that. He, so there are set of rules. I, I we shall talk about. I think you are referring to that, no? Yes, yes. Yeah. So there is that is about Saint John. Yes. Thank you. About Saint John, that rule was applied. That's why he was living in desert. He was not taking wine or any alcohol. So we have a reference, for example, we will just coming, we are going to come to that point, you know, when we talk about, uh, when we deal about St. John. What? Uh, sorry, is, is it, wasn't there also an Old Testament saying, can anything good come out of Nazareth? That, that's a, yeah, that's yeah. That's because, you know, Nazareth, you know, that's the thing reference, you know, about Jesus. He, how can Messiah come from Nazareth? No, nothing good can come out. From out. And he was foretold the Messiah would be coming from Bethlehem. And he was not from Bethlehem. But somewhere or other, you know, the census made him to go there. And, you know, his birth was somewhere or other in a plan like that. So that he was coming from Bethlehem. Even though he had nothing to do with Bethlehem, well, just born to it just you know because by by yeah by yeah by God's plan you know the senses and things like that came out. Okay, uh, Father. Also, I'm thinking that uh, Nazareth was not was not a big city, right? There was only one city in the whole of Palestine, that was Jerusalem. Jerusalem. That was the big city. That's where the everything big happened. People, every, yes. The big so, people and every event, everything happened. So, so all other things are, you know, yeah, insignificant. insignificant in the history of Israel. Yeah. Because, you know, there, everything was centered around Jerusalem. I think when you visit the Holy Land, you know, it's beautiful to see the, the, the area of Galilee is beautiful, you know, fertile land. For It's very fertile because of the Sea of Galilee. It's a, what's called freshwater big... So it's a lake. It's a lake. It's not a sea. But it's big. It's big. It's, let's say it was formed by volcanic eruption. And, you know, the rain pouring out, every in and water collected in the land, you know, that is the, the, the lake of... Uh, maybe 
I don't think so. You know, that lake would be bigger than Lake, you know, Michigan. No, may not be. I don't exactly. Oh, no. no, yeah. Le yeah, I think Lake Michigan would be greater. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's just like an ocean. But if you look at that area of Africa, there's not very many much water there. You know, and, and, and Jerusalem is not you know belong to Africa. No, that's not African continent. No. Jerusalem is. Uh, no, that is in Asia. In Asia. It's yeah. all rock. Basically. It's all you know. It's all desert. It's all desert. Only the Africa, you know, that Egypt is African. And Egypt, the, the present Egypt, the present Egypt, only one side is not African, that is Asian, that is, you know, what's called the Mount Sinai area. That area is belonging to the continent, uh, Asian continent. While Cairo and all other places are, you know, the, the African continent. Yeah. Ironically, Istanbul is the only city in the world that sits on two continents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's the bridge between Asia and Europe. Yeah, is that I didn't I did not know that. Oh. Well, thanks for Diego's email. <laughs> <laughs> if he sent an email, he says you're going to say I didn't know that at least five times. <laughs> <laughs> And it is beautiful, you know, this Mount Sinai area. We usually, what we do, you know, from Jerusalem, uh, I made a trip to Cairo, the bus. That's almost like 12, 13 hours drive. And it's all just through the desert. Just through the desert. Expressway like here, we probably have the time, right? Yeah, and uh, you know, this part is all Asian, and that was the that you know Israel once that was you know Israel captured it once once upon a time, and then by I think by some other you know, and then it was given back to the to the because that part that there Israel thought to be you know the part of Israel because that is uh, um, where. Maybe the all things you know. After maybe after uh, Jerusalem, uh, Israel, Mount Sinai would be the second place, the greatest place they you know they venerate, because Moses, the Ten Commandments were given there, and Mount Sinai was a place where you know. Even they say, when we pass through, they show us a place where the golden calf. You know, the people were worshipping golden calf. And Moses got angry and then threw the, the Ten Commandments plate. And then the golden calf was destroyed, but its image was imprinted on a rock. When we look into and imagine that image like a calf, it looked like. That's why I say, if we look like with the imagination, it looked like a calf. They said this is the place where they worship. So it's better. I advise everyone to go at least once, once to go there, you know, and see those things because it is very important. If you postpone and postpone and postpone, it will never happen. And the other thing is that, okay, next year I will go. If you get older and older, it becomes more. Okay, you know, it's more difficult. Another thing is, you know, every year things are getting worse in in Jerusalem. I mean, in a their place, you know. I have a suggestion further. If we can have a schedule next year, a trip to the Holy Land, let's say 3,000 or 4,000. Right now, we'll uh, uh, appoint a kind of a treasurer, <laughs> and then we can start putting in money there. <laughs> you know, by that time we get there, it's not it's difficult anymore financially. Well, I have one one recommendation: uh -huh. do not fly in Malaysia. <laughs> 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 See, you know, every year Father Louis is taking a group to Europe, no? Yeah. Yeah. Ask him to make a trip to, you know, arrange a trip. Not only this group, you know, announce in the church and then, you know, you may get enough people to go. 
Yeah, this group is not big enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it will be, you know, wonderful if you go there. That is, you know, very important for studies too. Okay. Fishing trip next summer or next winter to uh, Sea of Galilee. Sea of Galilee. You know, and there is a beautiful, this is a, when the tourists come, you know, there is a trip in Sea of Galilee with a, with a boat. There is a trip. So we take boat, you know, on one destination. And then we, we go with the boat, you know, just like, you know, as we plan, it can take, you know, in, uh, in half an hour you can just cross, you know, very slowly, or you can have that trip, you know, maybe for two hours. And then, you know, just areas where you know, they were, in, yeah, and uh, it's, it's so beautiful, interesting. And after that, we usually we land on a restaurant site and then go there. And eat a uh, lunch, and they call it Peter's fish. Fish. Peter got a fish, no? Fishing. And then you know, took the. Do the two-hour thing. Can we fish? <laughs> and uh, it's it's really good. You know, it's good. You know, because it is really worth. Always, we are always mentioning every day, every time, on the, all the Sundays when we come, Old Testament, New Testament, every, together. And uh, all reference to these places. And then what does it look like, you know? You, we, when we go there and just see things on a, you know... Well, we are fortunate, Father, that with technology, uh, we can see we can, we can see the, those places. You know, it's not the same. But you know, that is true. But what I, what my experience, you know, when I just visited the last time, visited the last time LA, I went to Hollywood, oh. and I saw the place where the jaw, the the movie jaw, no, uh -huh. jaws, that was filmed. Yeah. You know, it is filmed in a pond like this. <laughs> yeah. And there is a there is a shark there still keeping. They are keeping the shark, which you know they were uh, making it in as a shark, you know. And and that is, I think, uh, that pond is maybe maybe you know deeper. Anyway, I won't dr I won't be drowned in that in that pond. <laughs> And there it was filmed, and you see, and you watch it, and it uh, it gives an impression. What? It terrifies you. <laughs> it is happening on a big sea, no? And you, we can now see this is just like a pond, only this much area of a. <laughs> A place, you know, I, it was filmed there. The camera does not pan out. <laughs> yeah. When you get the Ten Commandments, we can have some, but it's the same thing. It's see, it's the same, that, that's the same place. Same thing. You can see, you know, those, I think, that the, the, the pirates of the Caribbean same. were the same thing. <laughs> there you can <laughs> see <laughs> everything. So, even though the technology, you can see it. You know, brother, we, we are in the end times and we are in the time of deception. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I have a, a feeling that even our government can use those things to deceive people. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> okay, I, I was just uh, talking about, you know, this. Okay, let's come back, let's come back. <laughs> so, so, I was just taking you, you know, again, you know, this at least, and at the end, you know, mostly passion, death and resurrection, okay? Two ministries, ministry in Galilee, ministry in uh, Jerusalem, passion, death and resurrection. And passion, death and resurrection all together, you please remember this name, this is very important, that we call Paschal Mystery, you know? Pascal mystery. mystery. That's a, 
what we call Pascal mystery. The meaning means uh, it's a great Greek word, Pascha, that means a kind of a sacrifice and oblation and things like that. So when we suggest, you know, when we you, when you meet with in theology, this the Pascal mystery. Every time that is a very important word. It contains these three things: passion, death and resurrection. So these three things are, are we refer always the Pascal mystery. Pascal mystery. That is a very important word in theology because it is on this thing that our all our liturgy is sending, you know, is centered around. No? Passion, death and resurrection. And that is the most important mystery of the Christian church. You know, Father, uh, we have the uh, stations of the cross here mm -hmm. on the grounds. And uh, I didn't know it at the time that it was already planned, but I suggested to Monsignor Louis that we go through the stations of the cross through his passion. Uh, I suggested, I said, you know, we actually need to have... 15th place. ...at the end where... We show the resurrected and, and Jesus. In our... And, and yeah. It's going to happen. It is just, you know, mostly the stations of the cross is to what, you know, what we call via crucis. Right. Where of the cross. So it is where that thing, you know, but in some places now they are putting now on the 15th station. 15th station of resurrection. So, and that completes only there. Complete, you know, leads to the resurrection. Yeah, yeah, sure. If it finishes with the, the death, then it, it has no meaning at all, unless it leads to resurrection. And that's why St. Paul says, or Peter says in the, the great speech given in Jerusalem, if you don't preach the resurrection, if Jesus was not in our reason, our preaching is dead. It's nothing. No? So it should lead to resurrection. Okay. So, you, did you get you know, a small picture of, again of uh, Luke? In Finsen narrative, two, two chapters, two ministries, ministry in Galilee, ministry in Jerusalem, then in between two you know, preparations, at the end, passion, death and resurrection. This is the, what we call the structure of Luke's Gospel. Okay. Now let us come take the Bible and then just analyze one after another. A little bit of it. We have, uh, did we see something about? No. So the first chapter, what we are call, going to see something about. We have already seen, we have already analyzed the first four verses about Theophilus, why, what is the meaning of it, and then, you know, why did we, uh, all those things, who was Theophilus, and all those things we already, uh, we already saw, okay? Then now comes chapter, you know, one, five onwards, the first announcement, the first announcement of uh, St. John's birth. So just, you know, somebody can read aloud the first announcement, at least this much, you know. What chapter does that? Chapter first, five onwards. During the time, yeah. Uh, in the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. And he had a wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her, her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous before God, walking in all commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. Now while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, it fell to him by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. 
and the whole multitude of the people who were praying outside of the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard. Your wife Elizabeth will, he will bear you a son, and you shall call him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great before the Lord, and he shall drink no wine nor strong drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn away many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. Continue, continue, yeah. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel who stand in the presence of God. And I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things come to pass, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they wondered at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he made signs to them and remained dumb. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, in his, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she hid herself, saying, Thus the Lord has done to me in the days when he looked on me to take away my riches <coughs> among men. Yeah, so there are so many things, you know, I don't know how many days we can reflect on that, at least some of the major, you know, things we can just see. For example, Sakrai and Elizabeth, you know, they all they both belonged to a priestly caste. <laughs> priestly caste, that means they belong to the... Uh, see, Israel was blessed with, you know, two great blessings, you know, First, you know, the blessing of the priesthood, that is, on the line of Aaron. And then, uh, again, Israel was blessed with the, the royal, that was in the line of David. Okay? David. David. So, because, so these are, both were, um, both were chosen by God. And uh, Aaron, of course, representing the priests, priestly class and David the power of God so they both blended they were the sign they were the structure of the society of Israel that means always the Israel was considered to be a theocratic nation what do you mean by theocratic nation it should not be a secular nation it should be always theocratic means the principle, God is the center of their law, theocratic. So, and for Israel, there is no other religion permissible. No. No religion other than Jewish religion is permissible. That's why uh, all our, our governments are, you know, what we call, it's secular. And religion is free choice anybody and the government has nothing to do with the religion only thing is that it protects each each and every religion from the tax of others in theory yeah that's okay <laughs> that's okay but you know at least at least at least in the way you know when the other people attacks the, the group you know it it gives a what's called a guarantee that everyone can practice their religion that's we call a neutralism no a neutral government that we call secularism no mm -hmm. so of course again another thing is very important 
uh, we have to be very careful. This is not anything about Bible, but you know, the new uh, society having these two words are always confused, but they are very, very different. Secularization and secularism. What is the difference between secularization and secularism? Because you know it's very. You're right. You're right. But you know the whole idea is different. Mm. Secularization means making the government secular and taking it out of theocracy. Secular secularism is a almost a form of religion in itself, but, but one that denies religion. I think you, you have to be you know uh, in English. You have to look into the nuances. I think because secularism, you know, for example, when we say our government is a secular government, it means it's a neutral. It doesn't mean it is opposed. It don't take sides. Yeah, it is neutral. Our government is secular. It should not you know, uh, should not be opposed. Secularization means, for example, religion is out of, no? Secularized society. What do you mean by? No more religion. Like it's totally out of. Communi communism at one point became... Such. So... Well, maybe I would say communism may be the, the, the most, what's called... Communism is their religion, and uh, that is the most, what's called, never been secular, in the sense, you know, they did not accept the, what's called, the traditional religions. They founded a new religion, what, we, what they call communism. Communism, no freedom. Yeah, that's the yes, sir. yeah. Okay, so secularism means, you know, it is a neutral meaning, I think. Secularization is taking away God from the government. And uh, uh, that's not good, you know. And the new media, new generation is trying to make all people secularize. That is, no place for God. And they pretend to be, you know, the other way, secular. That means neutral. Yeah, that, that's what I, I mean. Uh, that's what I, I, I said. Uh, we are in the age of deception. They deceive people. Yeah. I think when Glenn speaks like that, you know, it's, he gives beautifully that. See, yeah. uh, over, uh, I attended, you know, one of his speeches, you know, these things are. It should, it should be, you know, when they advocate secular, just, you know, but it should not be opposite, uh, opposing God, taking away God. You know, and there's subtlety in language that yeah. they refer to as verbicide, you know, where there's an atheist group called freedom from religion. Yeah. The Constitution, the Bill of Rights is freedom of religion, not freedom from it. And this organization that just came out this week has signed an agreement with the IRS to crack down on churches on, in, in, uh, regarding political speech, but the IRS will not divulge the content of that agreement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is, that is don't you know this thing. is the most transparent government we've ever had with? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's all really? way, uh, <laughs> Okay, so that's you know just about in you know, a secular secularization. Okay, so that's uh, just I just uh, pointed out you know because in new language you know these things are always heard and it's very very deceptive. Okay, so and um, I was talking you know just uh, Sakraya and Elizabeth both belonged to priestly class in the line of Aaron. Okay, another thing is. About them, what is said, you know, they obeyed. See, they believe they belonged to a priestly class. Then they obeyed. 
all the Lord's laws and commands. That means there were people called, could be called righteous, no? Before the Lord. Righteous. They were, both of them, righteous before the Lord. Still, the problem was, and that it just gives, you know, then, and they had, you know, they had no children. So there was a belief, there was a belief in, in uh, uh, Israel, especially in, if you don't have a children, mm -hmm. that's a curse. Like yeah, I think once we were, you know, I talked about it, you know, why it is cursed, because, you know, if you don't, when you don't have a life after death, you know, if you don't have a child, that means your life is finished upon earth. No more continuation. Totally finished. So, uh, when God punishes you, you know, without giving a, 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 what's called, a son to continue your legacy, then you are lost. And, can, is it distinctively of be, having a son or a daughter? No, no. That son. Ah, yeah, that time son was, you know, a patriarchal family. At least, uh, at least uh, someone to carry over. At least, that much. But, you know, son is always preferred. It's a patriarchal family. Okay, uh, society. So, the, here the Bible says again, uh, it doesn't say that, but say they were barren, they did not have ch children. It was not because of God's punishment, even though they were, you know, obeying all commandments and they were righteous before the Lord. They were not blessed with the children, so they were not punished by God. They are, that's not a punishment. So it is, in the, when it comes into the New Testament, it is what we call, it is for the revelation of God's, you know, glory. It's a revelation of God's glory. And interestingly, we can see, and Saint John was born, you know, from a special intervention by God. And usually Elizabeth could not be could not bear a child because she was so old. And that age, that was not possible. That's why he asked... Did, did the people have an idea of, about how old she was in 90. real years? I mean, was she a 70-year-old woman? I think 90 years old. I don't know. You know that, 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 that's. I, think I, I read it one time. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure. You know, it was past the normal. Yeah, that is the thing. You know. Anyway, that's very clear. Sakaria knew that she already passed the years of her conception. But this was kind of a God's plan. Yeah. Of course. God's plan. Because I mean, of course, like you say, there's royalty. There's a. Uh, uh, the priestly, but also the one of the covenants that, that uh, was promised to Moses was that he was you know, performing in, uh, in his life. Mm -hmm. so yeah. All this, all this is happening in God's plan. Yeah, this is true. That's why in New Testament it is precisely given not to show, you know, it's God's plan you know, a punishment, but it's a God's plan, revealing God's plan. And Jesus, when, you know, he was, uh, some people were asking, why this blind man was born blind? Was he because of, you know, the sins of his forefathers? And he, Jesus said, no, it's not. It is to reveal God's plan. So, it's the same thing here. So, interestingly to note, most of the great personalities of the Old Testament were born of barren Parents. Mm -hmm. For example, for example, Isaac, the first one, Sarah's, no? Sarah was not having a child. Isaac was born from a barren woman. Then Jacob, eh? Jacob, even, when Isaac had, you know, two, two wives, you know, Leah and Rebecca. And uh, Jacob was born from Rebecca, no? And uh, it was so late. Isaac was born. Joseph, 
These were the two. Jacob and uh, Joseph were the, from Rebekah. So, Jacob's the last one. And, uh, uh, you see, Jacob, uh, Jacob loved Joseph. Why? Because he was born in his old age. It says, no? <coughs> Jacob, uh, Joseph was the, the, the last one and he was born very late. And because of that, Jacob loved him. Jacob loved him. And uh, another thing is Samson. Prophet Samson. And to his mother, I think Elkanah, no? Fa father. Uh, mother. And he was praying and praying and praying to God to have a son. And at last, God gave Samson. Or Samuel. And to Samuel, his mother was barren. And he wa she was praying and praying and at last the angel appeared to her and then said, you know, you will have a son. And that was Samuel. And, this, and that line is John the Baptist. This is also the way the Lord shows the people that for him the impossible is possible. Yes. And mostly these things are clear, you know, these people are, these are at least, that's a, almost like a sign that God has chosen this particular person from the very beginning to fulfill something extraordinary. So if any of us right now were to have a baby, we'd be, we'd be chosen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. Uh, and Does that mean you're praying for a, for a child? So, <laughs> no. Should I bless you now today? Because they, no, today they have uh, today they have the, the, their wedding anniversary. Oh, really? yeah. the new anniversary. Yeah. It would be a real miracle if he had a son. <laughs> <laughs> so they have uh, they have their their wedding anniversary today. So. So you have to go to mass <laughs> So, so that means you know Old Testament, you know, is a proof that there are so many instances in which God chose the old people to be preferred one, you know, for a special intervention to show God's mercy and God's plan of uh, salvation. Okay, then. Why, you know, Sakraya was in the temple. Sakraya was in the temple. He was, you know, giving or, you know, offering the incense. That was the priestly turn. It was in that, um, there, uh, there were many priests, you know, from the Levite group, no? And uh, uh, they were chosen by Lord. And at that day, it was for Sakraya. And when... He enters, you know, he remains there and in the temple until his turn finishes. So he was in the temple and he was offering incense and he saw Gabriel, the angel Gabriel. Well, is it true that they would tie a rope to him when they went in? Is that true or is that just a... I don't know, I'm not sure about it. In case they died, if they did something, they, they could pull them out? No, that's when they went into the Holy of Holies. That is the last place, you know, where the, only the high priest can enter. Nobody can enter. Well, isn't that where Zechariah went no. into? No, they say it's only, you know, it's not a Holy of Holies, you know, only the high priest can enter. Nobody else. Where the covenant box is, yeah, covenant box is, you know, kept. Okay, um, so he, he was, you know, most probably there were many people who were standing outside and that would have been a Sabbath day, a day of worship. Many people were there. And then uh, an angel appeared uh, to him. And his name is, the angel says, Gabriel. So about something about angels, little bit, you know. What do you know about angels? Messengers of God. Yes, Gabriel's name is messenger. You know, it's uh, uh, even the name angel Angelos in uh, from 
Greek, angelos, that, ke, that Greek word passed to, to Latin, angelus, and that came in to English, angel. So angel is a messenger. Its word meaning is messenger of God. And Gabriel is, I think his name is, uh, is a messenger of God. There are about Christian angelology, at least this much, you know, I don't know whether you know something about this. It's a new interesting little bit of information. In every religion, there is an angelology and demonology. You know that? Yes. Not genealogy, demons. Angel, angel, and the science that deals with this called ology, no? Psychology. So, angel, ology, angelology. And then demon, demon, ology. Demonology. Well, wasn't the devil at one time? Angel. An angel. That was the. Anyway, this is the one thing is, if we please remember this, this is purely traditional. You know, only thing is what we have in the Bible is, at least there are three names of angels. Michael, Michael Gabriel, and Raphael. And um, there are references, many references in which, you know, angel came and appeared. Angel, for example, to, to Abraham, no, two angels appeared and then took him from Sodom and Gomorrah, no? led him from destruction. Or uh, many times, you know, angels appeared. For, for example, all these, all these people at the birth that was announced by an angel. Toby's son went on a trip. Toby, you know, Toby's son, Tobias, he went on a trip and angel Raphael was a companion for him. <laughs> yeah. That's why Angel Raphael is the is the, the patron saint of the travelers, and um, and he was the one who cured or healed the blindness of Tobit. Also, the, the also the healing in the Sarah, uh, also of the, the, the demons, you know, possessing and all those things, and that is the only place Raphael is referred. But the most places mostly is Gabriel. Yes. All these. All these angels are also angels in Islam. All these angels are from Old Testament. So, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, these three religions almost take all the names, same. Maybe in Islam some differences, for example, um, Gabriel, uh, I think they take it Ibriel. Something like that, you know, in Arabic. Little difference, that's all. Otherwise, it's almost the same. So angels, according to our understanding, Christian understanding, there is a hierarchy of angels. There is a hierarchy of angels. There are nine types of angels. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Mother Angelica? Yeah, she speaks about in the morning. The... Uh -huh. Yeah, that, uh, that's why Jesus says at the end when he was caught by the by the soldiers, then he says, "Don't you know that if I ask to my father, nine group of angels come and fight for me, they will come." So, but I don't do that. So, nine group. I mean, you know, so, for example, first we call the, the highest on the top, at the top of um, angels. It's a kind of a, like, you know, it's a circle. The, I again and again insistingly say that this is a tradition, okay? Not from Bible. So it's a kind of a tradition, like, you know, here is the throne of God, okay? Then there is the angels, you know, all together. Hmm? Oh, I'm not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. 
So, I think the angels guide me. So, the first one is, the first group is Seraphim. Oh, yes. Cherubim. Ser, yeah. Cherubim, another one is. <laughs> this is Seraphim. So, they are the, the nearest to God. In the angelic hierarchy, the highest, topmost is Seraphim. The group of angels, Seraphim. Second group is Cherubim. Second group is Cherubim. And the third one is called Thrones. Thrones. Throne? Not thorns, but throne. This is the first group. The second group. They call, you know, dominions. Dominions. Then they call virtues. And then they, they another one is powers. So, this is uh, the second group. The third group, principalities, archangels, and the ninth is angels. So these are the three groups. The, the hierarchy is this, like this. And of all, here is the three names. No? Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. So actually those were in the last category. Almost, you know, the, these are the first ones. And of all these archangels, the head is Michael, who fought against the devil. The devil you know, and it is in demonology, in demonology, that means, you know, they say, I looked into, I did not know really, you know, what is the demonology and you know, all those things, and looked into several sites, yesterday just looking to and then what they say you know this is the same hierarchy for, the demons? for the demons too wow. because from all categories of angels they were you know who rebelled against God and they all formed another hierarchy for the de de for the devil but they were only one third yeah one third belong from, from all, all the groups <laughs> and Lucifer was the leader. Okay. Who? Powers? Lucifer. Which one did, was he from? What group? What, what group? I don't know exactly, you know. Could be also from archangels. I've always heard he was an archangel just like Michael. So yeah. yeah. But you know, he was the, he was the head. Lucifer was the head. But do you know what is the mean by Lucifer the meaning? Light. 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 Looks loose. And he was the light of heaven. Who became dark. Darkness. So eh? but I will not serve. <laughs> okay. Isn't it that angels are purely spirit? Yeah, sure. And then, but in the, how, how do they appear in the, like in the many stories in the Old Testament? You know, the angel it. appeared to, as a, as a... May not be in a, in a, you know, in a, in a, what's called, when they appear. 
They just appear means, you know, then you know, being alike. like... For example, like, to, uh, to, to Joseph, the angel appears in a dream. Yes. A vision. A vision. Yes. Zachariah had a vision. Yeah. Tobit's son, this person was walking along with Tobit for a long time. Yeah. So the angel took on body form and stuff like that, but God's pretty powerful, I heard. This is, <laughs> this is, you know, I said again, I insist, this is simply tradition. tradition. <laughs> Yeah. It's mostly like a vision, you know. They see each other, but it's not a body. Could be. So, you know, there are, you know, there are different opinions about that, you know. We don't have time to, you know, discuss all those things. At least I just say about, you know, when we come to a point of angel, there could be, you know, why I treated that, you know, because it is from the Bible. And there could be some people can ask, you know, what do you mean by angel? You, let, you know, especially for the kids, you know, when we go for the classes and things like that, you know, what is, we sing cherubim and, you know, seraphim singing, especially in the Hosanna, no? The Hosanna hymn. So these people are, you know, the first groups, mostly they are the singers, maybe. <laughs> and there is a, at the end, after angels, there is a group of, they say, the choir, the heavenly choir. They always sing, hallelujah. It will be very boring, always hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we will continue next time. <laughs> Father, and where do our souls fall in that? We are not angels, you know, we are humans. Yeah, we are. Does, uh, what is the difference between angel and uh, man? The most important the, pre the prerogative for the, of a man is. What is it? So now free choice. Free will. Freedom. Free will. And the angel has, an angel has no free will. No. No. How did, uh, how did Lucifer fall? Yes. That's a, yeah, that was a question. But the angels has no free will because it is created to serve God and what God wishes is done. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, but for the, for the man, say, no, I don't want to do it. And that is the most important gift of God. Even... God has given that gift to man. Even man can say no to the giver. Yes. And that is something so great, no? And again, another thing is everyone, every one of us having a guardian angel. Guardian angel, yeah. Everyone or everyone that yeah. believes in God? Everyone, everyone, that believes in God. everyone have a, a guardian angel. Even the ones that don't believe. Yeah. yeah. Everyone has. And you know, uh, you, you would be able to know the name of your angel. So, the question is how you pray about it. And then the very first name when you wake up in the morning that comes into your mind is the name of your angel. Oh my God, I pray... Let, let Lucifer's name doesn't come to me. 